lift up your hands. The Lord God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, just wave your hands to him. Just bless him. We thank you. We honor you, King of glory. We bless your name, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Amen. Somebody appreciate Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. To take us on the first section this morning, let's welcome the Secretary General of NEMA, Uncle Mike Adewile. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We worship the Yahweh of Israel. We adore you. You are the king upon the throne. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. We worship you. We worship you. As I share your word this morning, grant to each and every heart a clear and compelling perspective of eternity. I ask eternal God that you deliver each and every one of us from the tragedy of feeling at home here on this earth. And give us a pursuit after you, a pursuit after the eternal. In our sojourn on this side of eternity, I pray in Jesus' name. Good morning. Please sit down. Hallelujah. You're welcome to God's marvelous presence this morning it's the day the lord has made and we are already rejoicing in his presence the bible says in the presence of god there is fullness of joy and at his right hands there are pleasures evermore hallelujah my pleasure to welcome you to a progressive encounter with the power of God's word. A progressive encounter with the person of Jesus Christ. With the person of Jesus Christ. Unto whom we have gathered. And who desire us to come to him. He desire you to respond to him. He desire you to seek his face. He desire an engagement with you. And I believe that since Thursday, you have been 
experiencing him. It's my prayer that today you will experience more of him. You will experience more of Jesus in your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'll be bringing a brief perspective on eternity. How can we mind in time what will matter in eternity? Each and every one of us, we are We have a sojourn that is part time. We have a sojourn in the space of time. How can you manage the time of your sojourning with a view on eternity in ways that it will matter in eternity? The Bible enjoins us to pass the time of our sojourning on this side of eternity with fear. And I'm here this morning, beloved, to remind you that God did not make you for time. He made you for eternity. The goal of God in calling you to relationship with his son is not for time, it is for eternity. Even though you are recruited or enlisted as a player per time, you need to spend your time here with eternity in the forefront of your heart and mind. The call of God upon your life is an invitation for you to participate in what we count for eternity. And so it's important that you keep a clear perspective of eternity. To keep in view, to maintain a clear perspective of eternity. Because you are not made for time, but for eternity. Amen. Amen. It means, therefore, that you need to use your time to invest in eternity as you seek to fulfill the call that God has placed on your life. Gaining a perspective of eternity. Turn your Bible with me to Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. Matthew chapter 13. 44 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man had found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Hallelujah. 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. And 46. Who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Hallelujah. May I remind you this morning that one of the preoccupations of Satan is to make you not to see the treasure in what is eternal and to focus your gaze on earthly 
temporary passing things. And so each and every one, each and every believer needs to experience a deliverance from a wrong perspective, a wrong view of things as temporal. Satan is doing through the different dash, through the different you know, things to distract your attention. Not to see the treasure in what is eternal, but to focus your gaze on earthly temporary passing things. As we read in that passage, what will make a man to sell all that he has in order to buy something else? Hallelujah. Get back to 44 again for me. 44. A man found a field and joyfully can you say with me joyfully not not grudgingly God has not called you to grudgingly invest your life but to joyfully invest your life with a clear goal a clear perspective of what is ahead. This man found a field with a treasure and for joy he gladly went sold all that he had in order to buy that field. What are you going to give what are you going to part with deny yourself off in order to lay hold on what is eternal on what cannot perish with time may the Lord open your eyes to see the treasure in his kingdom may the Lord open your eyes And grant you a clearer perspective to be able to pursue the glory of heaven so that you won't need to be pampered or cajoled it's going to be with joy this man when he found that he went and sold all that he, for, with joy he sold all that he had what will make a person to joyfully Put aside other things in pursuit of something of a higher value. Beloved, God has called you to a pursuit of his eternal treasures. And we're not just talking about living out of the fear of hell. Of course, hell has unspeakable agony. We're not talking about that. We're talking about living with the excitement of the glory of heaven. Being excited and motivated, inspired, based on the glory that is ahead. The Bible says, eyes have not seen. The Bible says, ears have not heard. It has not entered into the hearts of men what God is preparing for us. We're talking about living with the excitement of the glory that is ahead. That is the invitation of God to you. That is the perspective of the call of God to you. Amen. Amen. Talking about Jesus Christ in the book of Hebrew, 
The Bible says, Ooh, for the joy that was set before him. Hallelujah. What did he do? He endured the cross. Oh, what a hallelujah. Sing with me. All the way to Calvary he went for me. Jesus went for me. Savior went for me. Hallelujah. All the way to Calvary went for me. He died to save me. Oh, for the joy that was said before him. May the Lord help you to discover the joy. The joy of investing your life in things of eternal value. The joy of enduring, of disallowing your flesh. Is allowing your flesh the temporary pleasure of sin. Oh, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. And he has called each and every one of us. If you are going to follow him, he said, Carry your cross and follow me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I want you to know that the call of God on your life is a call to sacrifice. It is a call to sacrifice. It is a call to endurance. It is a call to deny self-indulgence. in view of something of greater glory in view of something of greater value what is it therefore is it wife is it husband is it work what is it that would distract you from the pursuit of what is eternal that should not be allowed I pray that God will help you to discover the excitement and the joy of investing your life may God help you to recapture a heavenly perspective of things. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 to 18, let's hear what Paul wrote. He said, For which cause we faint not, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Go on, please. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Back to 17, please. Back to 17. For our light affliction, which is bought for a moment. Hallelujah. What is the challenge you are facing at the moment? In your call to obey the Lord, 
in your call to live for Jesus? Are there issues that you are faced with? Yes, the Bible says all that we live a godly life in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. We are even in a part of the country where there is not much. You need to come and ask us. I come from Jaws. And my work takes me into the thick of what our brethren in Borno, in Yobe, in Adamawa have gone through. Our brethren in Benue State are going through. And so on. The Bible says it's a light affliction and it is for a moment. Hallelujah. But that light affliction works in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. May the Lord open your eyes to see that exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That is your calling. That is your calling. There is a glory in heaven to pursue and possess. And don't let the world, you know, the world system succeed in making you a captive to the passing things of this world. There is the glory ahead to, to commit your life to, to dedicate your life to. And that is the focus of this conference, the kingdom of God. To commit yourself, to focus yourself, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That is the call of God. On you and the Bible says all other things all other things will be added the distraction of all other things is making many to lose perspective of this eternal weight of glory are you a captive already of the passing temporary things of this world, you need to free yourself. In Isaiah, the Bible says, shake off the dust of your neck. O captive daughter of Zion, shake off. You see, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. I want to remind you, beloved, that you have been called to participate in something glorious. The Bible says we've been redeemed not by corruptible things, but by incorruptible things, even the words of God. And saved to participate with God what we count for time and eternity. Something happened to Mary. And please turn with me to Mark chapter 14 verses 3 to 9. And I want to point briefly your attention to what Jesus Christ said about it. 14, 3 to 9. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she break the box and poured on his head. Say with me, she break the box. I mean, sorry, she broke the box. She broke the box. She broke the box. Hallelujah. And poured it on Jesus. Wow. 
What happened? How did people see it? And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? Why would you waste such a precious ointment on Jesus? What did Jesus say? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. You see, I, I, I read a commentary sometimes, I'm not sure I can remember clearly, about the value of this money. They said it is the wage. It, it, it comes to the annual wage of uh, workers in those days. And Jesus said, let her alone. Hallelujah. Why trouble ye are, she hath wrought a good work on me. Mm. This woman poured, lavished a very expensive ointment on the Lord Jesus Christ. She anointed the feet, wiped the feet with her hair. And what does that signify? What is your alabaster jar of ointment? She could have poured that oil on herself. She could have adorned herself with it. And when she passes by, people will respect, oh wow, what, what a perfume, what, 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 a, what an expensive thing. There was a time I passed through Dubai International Airport, and you know if you, if you have been through that way, uh, all those guys that are selling perfume, if, even before you know it, they, they can sprinkle something on you for you to have a taste of what that is about. She could have done that on herself. She could have, you know, invested that on herself. But she chose to invest it on Jesus. And if she had done that on herself, who would have remembered her? Nobody. But because of what she did, Jesus said, A heart should come up for remembrance. Hallelujah. If you don't invest your life on Jesus Christ, that life will be used for something lesser. That life will still be used for something. Something else will still place a demand on your life. I place a choice before you this morning. And it is a choice to invest your life on Jesus. To invest your life on the kingdom of God, on the pursuit of the kingdom of God. To come away from other things placing a demand on you. And to give God and the matters of his kingdom the first place. Because he says, seek first. Everybody say first. To give God and the matters of his kingdom the first place. In your life, in your talents, in your resources, in your time. How are you investing your time? How are you investing your talent? Keeping a perspective of eternity has to do with accountability. There is coming an accountability day. There is coming a time when you will be required to give account of the endowment of grace upon your life. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 7, that to everyone grace has been given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There is a deposit of grace on your life 
and participating in a conference like this brings you into contact with a rich grace of God. Hallelujah. What is that supposed to mean? Supposed to be invested for God's glory. Pouring of your life and all it entails on Jesus. It's, it's the call this morning. She poured the fragrance of her life on Jesus. She left a legacy. Her act were to be remembered, you know, beyond our time. What legacy would you leave behind? What do you want to be remembered for? It is what is deposited in your, in your eternal account that is actually your own. Did you hear me? It is what is deposited in your eternal account that is actually your own. What are you investing? What, how are you investing your life? How are you building up your eternal account before the Lord? Amen. It is only what you succeed to transfer there that you can truly call your own. Whatever you are doing in this world should be seen as an opportunity to invest in eternity. I said to us that even though you are called part time, you are called to operate within a space of time your, your calling is with eternity in view. And the time that you have now is an opportunity for you to invest your time, your life in eternity. Hallelujah. How do we recover a sense of eternal perspective to issues? For instance, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, which we celebrated yesterday, did not, did not make sense to some earthbound, time tied mortals. To them, it was a colossal waste. When you begin to look like that, where would such an almighty God allow his only begotten son to be so brutally murdered? Have you watched the Passion of Christ? That was even acted. But what our Lord and Savior went through was certainly much more than even that. Why would God do that? Why? When God had all the powers to deliver him. But to God, people of God, nothing was lost. Hallelujah. It was a compelling sacrifice of an amazing love made to rescue all humanity from an impending disaster of an imaginable proportion. So much was at stake and something needed to be done to save humanity from an impending disaster of an unimaginable proportion. Do you know what it means when Jesus Christ spoke to us about hell? In a brother, Billy Coney gave an, an interesting perspective of it. And I can never, I'm not sure I can recover from it. Beloved, may the Lord help you to gain a clear perspective of the reality of eternity. There are two eternal realities, heaven and hell. Amen. And in Matthew, in Matthew uh, chapter 13, 
was that what we just do? Um, 44 to 46. Okay, that's that's one I just spoke on. Um, let me leave that. Let's let's go on to um, to Mark chapter nine. Yes, from verse 43. Exactly. You're familiar with this passage, which says, if your hand offend you, cut it off. Better to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. And he said to, he wrote, about the fact the permanence is the eternity talks about permanence in eternity nothing changes whatever changes need to occur has to be now here and now in time and if you go on because of my time if you go on to you know verse 48 you are going to see, you know, several things. He said, their fire is not quenched and their warm does not die. What does that imply? It talks of the permanent state of things in eternity. How that the worms are going to be in that state for all of eternity. The fire is going to be burning for all of eternity. That is scary. All the time I have had time to come and look at it again and again, I say, Lord, help me to do more to rescue people from this damnation, from this eternal damnation it is horrible it is horrible amen you see everything is you know hazy except it is seen from a perspective of eternity to find the real value of anything we have to divide it by eternity and until you see correctly you are not likely to act correctly. That's why my prayer this morning is that God will help you to see correctly. That woman that poured that ointment, that broke a halabaster jar, saw something beyond just that jar. And she could lavish it on Jesus. Amen. The person that saw a field with the treasure and went and sold all that he had in order to buy that field he saw something the bible say he with joy hallelujah went so all that he had in order to buy that field may god to help your perspective this morning in the name of jesus christ Each and every one of us need to comprehend and apprehend that which is weighty on our Father's scale of measure. What are the things that are weighty to which your life need to be committed? What are the ephemeral things of life to which you need to withdraw your life? We shouldn't come, we shouldn't carry on business as usual. There are weighty matters that God is calling your attention to in camp meeting 2016. And beloved, let us, you know, respond to Jesus. It says that our temporary affliction, 
which is but for a moment should not distract us from the eternal weight of glory that is a weight that are weightier matters issues of soul winning is a weightier matter to God matters of the kingdom of God investing your resources investing your time investing your life to promote the glory of Christ within every people group every ethnic across the world is a weightier matter Devoting your life to help and hearing believer restored. Investing time to intercede, to pray and to fast. In order that the power of God may be released to bring transformation. To set the captives free, to heal the sick, to break yokes. Paying the price. We make deposits in your eternal account and God is calling you to dedicate your life to matters that are weightier before him amen amen I want you to know beloved that this present time you have it's sandwiched between two eternal realities and it is a time to be invested for what we count in eternity hallelujah the glory of the gospel is that Christ has purchased for us an eternal redemption. Hallelujah. He paid for an eternal salvation. We did not just receive life, people of God, we received eternal life. Amen. And our blessed hope as believers transcend this time. 1 Corinthians 15 19 says, something quickly 1 Corinthians 15 19 if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable people of God our hope transcends this time this life the blessings of peace joy forgiveness healing protection provision they are a tip of the highs bag. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man what God is still preparing for us. The ultimate victory for the child of God is life that knows no end. You must interfere. You must stop anything that will stop you. What are the things that are threatening your advance into participation with Christ in eternity? What are the issues around you that you know this is a clear threat to my placement in eternity? It must be dropped. It should not go out with you of this camp meeting. It must be dropped. Amen. Our ultimate hope is not here. It is in eternity. And it is the loss of this viewpoint that is the greatest calamity that has befallen the modern church. As I close, turn with me to Hebrew chapter 11, 35 to 38. Hebrew 11 35. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Yes. 
and others at trials of mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Yes, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Yes, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in caves of the earth. Go back to 23 of that same Hebrew. 23. Verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw a proper child and they were not afraid of king's commandment. Yes, 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Hello? The next one. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Ne next one. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Mm. May God make you another Moses. May God give you the understanding of Moses. Who chose a different, who knew his identity. He knew his identity. He knew who he was born to be. Do you know your identity in Christ? Do you know who you were born to be? Are you mixing up yourself with what you are not? A treasured possession. God's treasured possession. Wow. A holy nation. A peculiar people. A royal steward. A, a royal priesthood. There's a need to rediscover your identity and to refuse everybody say refuse to refuse to be perverted to be corrupted to refuse any lesser thing the bible says god has raised us up and made us to sit with christ in the heavenlies far above principalities and powers Above rulers of darkness of this world. Moses knew his identity. He chose rather to suffer affliction than to enjoy the temporary pleasure of sin. Ah! How many of us put up with the temporary pleasure of sin? Are you still in that? It must be done away with. It must be done away with the temporary pleasure of sin. It must be done away with for the eternal weight of glory. God is calling, has called you to a higher life. We need to live above the mundane, perishing, perverted issues of this world. Keeping eternity in view is a fight. And you need to engage in that fight. The Bible says fight a good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Wait until you have been called. I call you this morning as I close. To lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul.
Jesus, we need your help. Are you still putting up with the temporary pleasure of sin? It must be repented of this morning. You must, you must, you must resolve this morning. You must resolve. You must resolve. Got my mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my Jesus, put my word. 
rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Please, because of our time, more than a song, a decision must be made before the Lord this morning. Make up your mind to go God's way. To pursue that which is eternal. To pursue that which has a weight of glory. To dedicate your life, your talents, your time, your resources. To promoting the glory of Christ. To, to discipline yourself, your body possessing your body in sanctification and in honor. Resolve this morning that you are going to increase the deposit in your eternal account. You are going to increase the deposit in your eternal account. No, 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 no. It's not going to be empty. No, you're going to increase it. You are, going to, you are going to invest your life. You are going to stake your life. Yes. Yes. You are going to stake your life. Resolve before the Lord this morning. Please, before Brother Mike steps out of that place, I think this is too serious to just let go like that. If you know that you need to step up, you need to move to another level, a deeper realm of Christian living, a deeper realm of commitment of your life to Christ. The way you've been living does not reflect somebody that has a relationship with Christ. Get off on your seat and come here. Can we sing that song? I made up my mind. Go ahead. To go God's way the rest of my life. When you come, just kneel down and, 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 and lay your I life down like that. To go God's way the rest of my life.
begin to pray. Lord, this is not a decision of my head, but of my heart. I resolve before you this morning to go your way, to pursue the path you have laid out before me. I resolve this morning to contend and war, a, a good warfare with everything that interferes with my obedience to you, Lord Jesus. I shall war a good warfare. I shall war a good warfare. I shall lay hold on eternal life to which I have been called. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your amazing love to each and every one of us. You loved us so much that you called us to a higher life. You called us to a glorious life. A life far and above the mundane, perishable things of this world. You called us to participate with you in, in, in to, to share in your nature and to participate with you in what we count for all eternity. What a great privilege you are giving to each and every one of us to have dividends in heaven to our accounts. Father God, we realize this morning that we are bogged down. We are bogged down with issues. Our perspectives are flawed. We see in time not in it not 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 in eternity. And I pray for everyone here making a commitment to you this morning. I pray for deliverance from every encumbrance with, with, with issues of this world. Bible says, love not the world, nor the beings that are in the world. I pray for deliverance from every love for this world. The systems of this world, the spirit of this world, the fashion of this world, the ways of this world every encumbrances with that with any of your children bound before you here I break every such encumbrances by the power in the name of Jesus and I release you this morning by the intervention of the mercy of God to go God's way for the rest of your life. I release you this morning by the intervention of the mercy of God to go God's way for the rest of your life. Lord, as your people make up their mind to say no to the flesh, to say no to the world, to say no to Satan, and all of his attractions and distraction in the world. Father Almighty, we stand with them as your servants. We stand with your children this morning. We stand with these ones this morning. And I receive grace. I receive grace upon each of your lives. To establish you in your obedience to Jesus. To keep you steadfast in going the Lord's way. And to grant you a clear perspective of eternity. To live in time with a clear view of eternity. Has that you uphold your people. Not to commit to the temporary pleasure of sin any longer. Pray for deep conviction. I pray, Jehovah God Almighty, for true repentance and a forsaking of our wicked ways. 
I ask Father God that your hands will be upon each of these your children to keep them steadfast and unmovable abounding in your work living daily for you with a view of eternity thank you Father I pray in Jesus name Thank you.